we're going to do a soil test here. This is the uh, done by the Western Massachusetts Master Gardeners Association, and uh, we take a sample of the soil from um, several different half a dozen different places in a plot, so you don't get a single a sample, and you mix them up. And we take a small part of that and add some distilled water so that we get a buffered solution, as they call it, uh, which is pretty straightforward. And make sure we stir that up so we get a good solution. And um, we know that we're going to try to grow vegetables in this, so we have a um, normative pH value that we're trying to reach here. And once we get a pH reading for this solution, we'll be able to recommend how much in the way of, uh, of um, soil amendments in um, calcium to add. That's, that's. So we just put that in a solution and let it sit for a minute. And this is a good thing to do in the fall uh, because uh, adding the uh, amendments now allows them to work all winter long and uh, get the soil in shape for the spring. Uh, you can test any time of the year, and in fact, the Western Massachusetts Master Gardeners Association has soil testing clinics at all the, most all of the um, farmers markets up and down the valley all summer long, starting in the spring. Amherst, I know I've worked at, Westfield, Terry has, and I think Springfield also. And so you can get soil tested. There's a small charge for this, a dollar per sample during the year, but this time of year we're doing this for as a service, um, and um, it's a useful way to know whether your soil is ready for the plant, the crops you want to plant. Some of the, like this is, we're testing for a plot that's supposed to be used for vegetables, and the pH requirements are a little different for lime, for potatoes or berries. Blueberries are a very acid-loving plant, so they uh, usually require reducing the pH by adding sulfur. Uh, usually vegetables uh, require the addition of, of, of some lime. So if we let that in there for about a minute or two, maybe a little bit longer. And um, we'll see what it... We're really happy to be here today. This community garden is a wonderful place. Uh, lots of people working hard, uh, cleaning up at this time of year. This is October 22nd, uh, but there's obviously been a lot of activity all summer long that's generated a lot of flowers, vegetables, other plants. All looks very good. So, all right, let's take this out and wash it off so we can see what color it is. And that is looking, might get another set of eyes, like it's yep. about 5.5. Five. Yep, I'd say you're right, 5.5. Five. 5.5 5 for a pH, which um, for going vegetables is going to require the addition of some lime okay. uh, at about seven, 6 to 7 pounds per 100 square feet. We typically, 6 to 7 pounds per 100 square feet of plot. And we generally rec uh, recommend pelletized lime. In the fall. It, yes, in the fall, which allows the uh, slow release of the lime into the soil over the winter season. pH is a really important aspect of uh, soil because most crops cannot access the nutrients they need unless they're growing in the right pH. Correct. We also run both an email and a, I guess we don't have a phone hotline here in Berkshire County. They have a phone hotline, but we have an email hotline where people can 
write in and ask gardening questions and get an answer back within two days, 48 hours. Every two years we run a Master Gardeners training program that's about 12 weeks of all day, once a week, um, all day um, classes, lectures, talks, that sort of thing. And then um, I'm an intern this year. I did the courses in the spring. You have to do 60 hours of volunteer work after that to get your Master Gardener certification. And then the Master Gardeners Association, which is about two or 300 people, I guess it is now. Think, yeah. they have, uh, some 200 people. Also does some community gardening um, assistance at some places in the valley. Not very many, because we can't have many projects with that few people. But like we're helping with Steria Hurst and a few other places. It's a good program. The next Master Gardener training class will be in the spring of 2013. And you can access information about it on the website. Hi, I'm one of the interns with the Master Gardener program. And for part of our community service, we've been um, making uh, cement leaves. This is from a, a comfrey leaf. Uh, this one is from a uh, grape leaf that was from across the way. And what we've done today is we've been um, making uh, little uh, bird baths or butterfly dishes out of uh, rhubarb leaves. And so we mount up the sand and uh, put the uh, leaf over the top of it and then uh, take Portland cement that we've mixed with water and uh, cover the leaf with it. It'll take, oh, three days, a week, ten days to dry. In the fall, it'll probably take a little longer because it's a little, um, a little colder. And some of, the, um, s some of the people who've made these, this one has like a little pedestal. Mm -hmm. This one's got a little square. This has got some rocks oh, that have been put in there. Yeah. And um, once they dry, um, you flip them over, and they're they've got this kind of a shape yeah. and you pull the leaf off and you get the um, you get the veins the, yeah. uh, of the leaf in there and um, you can use them uh, you can do them flat and use them maybe for uh, stepping stones in your garden or as I said before you can um, have some water in them for butterflies and uh, birds Lovely. yeah Lovely. It's a pretty simple um, project. You, you want to wear gloves. Um, if it's really windy, you might want to wear a mask um, so you don't breathe in any of the concrete. And it's, it's an, a fun project to do. Well, thank you so much. You're very welcome. There is often brush that needs to be cut up and thrown as far over on the brush pile, located next to the wood chip pile at the back side of the garden, as possible. A bobcat operator is hired to turn the compost piles so that they will be well aerated and decomposed more quickly. It is important when adding compost materials to the compost pile that you pitch it to the top in order to maximize decomposition and use less space. Community gardeners use various types of containers to compost in their own plots. I'm going to demonstrate starting a lawnmower. So first you want to come around to the front and there should be a choke of some kind. This one has a little rubber button right here in the front. And so you just want to push that two or three times that forces gas into the engine. You want to bring this bar up so it stays snug with the handle and Some of these you need to hold it in place. There might be some that once you bring it up, it would stay by itself. Then you want to put your foot onto the lawnmower. Grab the pull string and give it a nice pull. It might take a few times. And then to stop the lawnmower, you just release this metal bar. 
It is important to clean the community gardening equipment before storing it for the winter to avoid rust and general material breakdown. So water hoses in the garden can be an issue if they're not wound up properly on the stand. Uh, it could be a hazard if someone's trying to mow, they might run over the hose with a lawnmower and ruin it. Somebody could potentially trip over it. So when you're finished with the hose, you want to make sure that it's properly wound around the holder. And this is actually two hoses together, which makes it even more challenging because it's very long. So sometimes you have to unkink it and twist it around for it to lay nicely, but it'll definitely be worth it for the next person who has to come along and use the hose to water their his or her garden. And with more practice, the faster you will get. This hose still has water in it. So once that is all wound up, you want to make sure that the faucet is turned all the way to the left. Make sure that's completely off. Uh, any water leaking out, you know, over time, the little drips can equal gallons and Northampton Community Garden has to pay for the water. So we could end up with a very large bill at the end of the season if everyone uh, forgets to turn off the faucet. And then there are little black plastic turn-off switches on either uh, hose connection. So you also want to make sure that that is turned off, which um, it's easy when the water's still running. You can see if you've turned the water on or off. <laughs> 